Never used it. Never used it. Okay. I peeked at it, but I've never used it. Okay. Yeah. So it is actually one of my most used tools. I know I'm in the ed tech realm now and uh, whatnot, but I, I did see a use for it and I've seen a use for it in the classroom as well as a sixth grade teacher. So I'm going to transition to Canva and Canva. I'm going to paste right in the actual chat. It is a design tool that gives you just the ability to design really well. Canva is great because it is, it, it, well, it doesn't hold your hand. It gives you a lot of examples as far as design. We'll talk about design from maybe what a teacher would use it for and then perhaps what you could use it for outside of the teaching realm or world. And then um, you can also use Canva with your students as well, especially if, if you have students that are 13 years and older, if you have students who are 13 and younger, um, then they'll have to kind of have parent consent. But this is a, a nice tool that a lot of people use because many have Chromebooks now and they use um, the online element versus just like a standard computer. What's great with Canva is you can access it on any device. It's all done online. All the designing is done right here over the internet. So you don't have to have a powerful enough computer to run it like you would maybe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrate. So this is a great alternative to that. Okay, with Canva, what's really great is I'm here, I've logged in, I'm on my own home page right here, but you can already see from, you know, a teacher standpoint, you have presentations, you have social media posts that you can use for your classroom if you have that, or your school, and then, you know, some of the things that you probably wouldn't use, but there's the infographic, the poster, uh, logo, a lot of different things that you can kind of start and click on and it helps you get ready. You know, brochures you may use with your students, flyers for classroom events, um, and a lot of other things in here. There's just so many things you can do with Canva and it walks you through a lot of them as far as giving you ideas. So just right off the front page, the home page, just the recommended designs, you can see that, oh, Canva's got a lot. And then, of course, you can kind of narrow it down a little bit in the create design if you need specific ideas. When I go to create design up in the upper right hand corner, it's going to give me some suggestions off offhand, just like here. So I could go right to some of these suggestions. I could start with custom dimensions, meaning I could create a design from scratch based on how big I want it. But I usually never create it from scratch because it has so many templates to go off of. From here, maybe uh, I'll do a quick search. I just want something like a digital poster. I want my students or I want to create an example of a digital poster that I can share with my students. So I'm going to click on poster and it's going to change it into the size of a poster. It's going to show you all the templates for posters and these are free to use that they have for you um, so you're think about your students they could just go to the site and click on these templates and then it gives them a starting idea for a digital poster of some sort if you're going through marketing perhaps this can give them an idea of design and how to market certain things if you're talking about doing a poster in a traditional classroom sense where they kind of present their learning, then this can give them an idea as well. Um, but the posters for education are more um, trending along the lines of infographic. So this one is more infographic. Um, this one is procedures, obviously, for self-quarantine under COVID. But I'll, if I click on that, I notice that, you know, aside from the content, uh, it gives me a good idea of how to organize information. So. Um, I can click on any element of this poster now and change it to what I want. As a student, as a teacher, maybe you change this to procedures for using Chromebooks or procedures for your online class or something like that. All you have to do is click on the actual element and start editing it. Um, this is text, so I can start um, editing the text. So maybe I'm going to change this whole thing to procedures for online learning and Mr. Bowie's class. So I have that right there now. This is gonna change and become something different. Uh, here, I would just put maybe a little more detail about my class and I could change it up 
and just say we are going to do a flipped model of teaching. Be prepared to watch a lot of videos. And from here, I can change the text and, and whatnot to whatever I want. And then, of course, if I left the pictures here in this specific template, it wouldn't make sense, really. Maybe the stay-at-home one will um, for this type of context. But I can change up the actual um, images. So I'm just going to click on this image and press backspace, and it's going to delete it. And from here, I can start to add in different elements. I can go to the left here, and there are a lot of things I can add. If I click on template, I can change it up if I want and go to um, any type of different posters. These are school posters. These are photo posters, quote posters, a lot of different things I could use. Um, from here, I can also upload elements. I've, I've got some pictures here that I've used before that I can upload. And I've got photos that are free on Canva to use, so actual photos that people have taken. Now, Canva is freemium, meaning there is a cost to it, but you also have the option to search for the free things. If you click on free, everything in the search file here will be free. All these images, uh, most part, are really great quality, and they're free to use. But it doesn't, if I clicked on an image, say this one right here, it doesn't really match the overall theme of my poster. So I, I can't really use an image like that. Maybe I want a more cartoony type icon. I can click on elements and kind of do the same thing. Here are elements. There are a ton of different things that I can use for my project. So this is more about online learning. So maybe I start a search with online learning. And from here, I have a ton of different icons I can add and customize my poster with. And again, Canva is a premium. So clicking on this little icon right here and then going to free will allow me to just use any of the free icons. And some of them even animate. So if I wanted this one that animates, I could click on it. And then from here, I can just change the size and kind of put it wherever I want. So my poster becomes almost a more interactive type poster now. Um, and again, I can start choosing any of these icons because I've changed it to free. And then I can click and just add wherever I want. And it's very easy to design with um, Canva. As you see, I'm dragging. It shows me alignment kind of dotted lines. Um, this one aligns center to the text right here and that image. If I go up a little bit more, it'll align with other things. So it really kind of holds your hand as far as like making a very organized and a nice designing um, poster. Uh, any questions so far about the elements in Canva? OK, so again, if you gave something like this to your students and kind of walked the room and said, OK, today we're going to make a digital poster. You're going to give me information on, um, you know, let's just say conjugation in Spanish or something like that. And then they're, you know, give them some design requirements. You have to use some visuals and then for sure take advantage of the space for your text. Now, this poster is almost more like an infographic. Um, which is, I think, a lot more effective than the digital poster, but a poster is totally fine as well because it's mostly what many students are used to. If you click on text, you do have the option to add in different type of text as well. And all these are free to use, so any of the texts are free. You can click on them, and they'll go right in here as far as like a style of certain texts. So if I you know, add that in, I can even customize the look of my text a little bit more. So again, Canva gives you nice design features to really, for your students, display their learning, and give them a sense of that marketing hat. It puts them in the, the, the you know, driver's seat of um, a designer. And there are also short videos, which they can make and use uh, for their projects that can be free a lot of good quality videos that they can add to their posters so that um, you know, it gives them the extra element. So if I added that video to an interactive poster on Canva, then it can be played. Now, with videos and such, 
obviously you could not print them because Canva, you can see up here, it says print poster and whatnot. And, um, but Canva gives you, say I'm done with my poster, it gives you a lot of different options as far as downloading. Now, I, I have this button that I can click on and I can download this as a video since it has movement parts in it and then it becomes an interactive poster that way and then they can send it to you on Google Classroom or share it with you on their drive and then they have you have their project. Um, you can also have them download it as a PDF or just a picture and then they can send it to you that way if you're requiring them to make something like this as a project. There are options again to just present just to share the link and then you can see in Canva all the different design elements if they share that link with you. And of course, so, so there's a lot of ways to get the project as your students work on it at, and, and whatnot. So you don't have to just have them download and whatnot. They can actually share this link with you and turn it in on Google Classroom or Schoology or Seesaw. And then you can click on it and, and view the project like I'm showing you now. So you can see all the different design elements that they've added. And any questions so far? OK, as we go through Canva, you might be wondering like what some of the other elements are, uh, really just different design aspects that can really give you that extra layer of customization. So, Whatever you think your image might need, Canva probably has a way to do it for you. Some features are not free, but the ones I'm showing you are. So everything I'm showing you today is part of the free um, kind of suite. <clears throat> so that is just from the digital poster kind of standpoint. Now I've used Canva on just like my EdTech hat, my side hustle. Um, you know, hat um, to just design things to market for ed tech kickoff and and websites and whatnot. So on this website, so a lot of our design materials are used using Canva. So this little GIF here, I use Canva to make it, and um, you know everything on our site. This logo, I use Canva to kind of help me put it together. A lot of these design materials come from Canva. So if you're looking at our site and you think it looks decently good, then Canva helped us kind of design a lot of it. So thinking of your own kind of side hustle if you ever had one or um, if you wanted to up your teacher website and you wanted better design materials, you can definitely do that. If I click on home, I click on design anything, I can go to, if I type in logo, it has, um, template for me to use. So if you're, you know, thinking you want to design type logo, me even for your classroom or something like that, it has little um, logos that you can kind of edit and make your own, like this striker leap gaming one. So you really like the shield element in there. You can kind of move this dragon out and then go to elements. And maybe you prefer a bear or something like that. And there's this teddy bear that you can just put in there. It looks really intimidating, really great, right? So you can you can change that. Let's say this is going to be Mr. Bowie's. Laugh, right? OK, so LA6. And that is the going to be my logo for my class website. So I can just click download and start designing. So it gives you a lot of options, not even for your students, but for you to make your class materials very interesting and, and gives it an extra little pizzazz, a little hook. Like if you think of this on a class website, students would be like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And it didn't take me all that long to make. I have two questions, Do This is Lori. Sure. Um, so I've used PictoChart and it seems like, so PictoChart, the free version, you can use mm -hmm. up to like five is all. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of clunky mm -hmm. for, you know, sending it to the teacher from students aspect. It, and mm -hmm. it seems like Canva is a little easier. It, would you agree? I would definitely agree. Uh, I've used Canva a lot, many. So I've, I've had the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of people on, on the Google side of things. And uh, they use anything from pixel books to just Chromebooks. And they always go to Canva just because okay. it's so easy to use. And I, I agree. And then, um, so Canva, does it have, like, Picto Chair, I think, I can't remember for sure, but I was, like, five, you, know, you could use up to five times, and I had to edit my old ones. Um, mm. Canva, does it have a limit for the free, and then how much is the premium? Okay, so I never had a limit for the free. 
okay. far as how many I could design. And I, I, I do have the premium. I think it's like 130 for the year, but I use it all the time. And okay. with the premium, you get like folders to organize all your designs. Um, in Canva, you only get one folder for the free one, but I believe you don't have a limit on designs. Okay. And you have a brand kit where it helps you like organize your colors. That's, uh, um, and then, you know, some of the things, some of the logos that I've made with it. Um, and then you have other things like when I go to some of my designs, I, I have the opportunity to animate them. Mm -hmm. So if I click on, let's, let's go to some of my designs here. Let's just say this, this JPS one, for example, um, I can click on animate. That's a premium feature. And then I can start to just animate the files on there. Oh, cool. And that becomes, I can make that into a movie or a GIF. Okay. And it does that automatically for me. So for us, having something like this has been really nice and um, you know allows us to make an extra element for our, and that's kind of trippy, don't use that one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes, it gives us like that extra little thing. Uh, okay. and, um, and then you have other things too, where you can isolate different images. So more like Photoshop-y type features, but um, we use it all the time as a team. So we ju justified using the, the premium. And of course you get a lot more, you already get a ton of different pictures you can use as I, you know, you saw my search. And as I pull things up, but you get even more premium kind of pictures and images. So, okay. And then last question: So, students when they are doing something on Canva, mm -hmm. it is user friendly for them turning it into Google Classroom? Yeah. So, like okay. I kind of so I click on that poster again, and what they can do is if you allow them to, um, you know, share links with you, you, they can for this video if they wanted to show the interactive elements, they can download it and then put it in their drive and then share the link with you, paste the link in Google Classroom, or they can simply just share the link with you. So if I click on share the link and copy that, anyone with link can view this design, no sign in required. That's what I would do to be honest. So uh, if I pasted this in Google Classroom, all you would need to do is click on that link and then you could see their poster look just like that. Super easy, right? Yes, great, thank you. That that does seem a lot easier. PictoChart kind of got clunky at times, so um, I just think kids need an easy way to turn it in, so thank you. Yeah, so um, going with the Google Classroom type thing, uh, you would just have them paste that link in how you want them to submit things, and that's, you know, shouldn't be too much of a problem, I don't think. Okay. Okay, and then we had a question about the JPS Viking. So I, I, I think I got this Viking. There was an email sent from your marketing PR person that sent out a bunch of logos. So I just saved that one because I knew we would be doing some trainings for JPS. So um, that's how I got that logo. So I think there's maybe an email you could search somewhere. I, I'll try to find it and forward it to you. But do, did you um, like save it to your file? Excuse me. <clears throat> did you save it to your file or did you like cut and paste it? Yeah, so for this one specifically, you might have seen it around a few different trainings, but I went to where it says um, uploads right here, and then you can upload a, anything you want, and then that becomes part of your, uh, you know, things that you can add in. So here's various versions of our um, coding logo. I can just click on it, and now my coding logo is, is it's right on Canva, so I can just add it wherever I want. I can crop it if I just want half of it or anything like that. But anything you upload, you can put right into your Canva designs. And this was, um, I got this from an email somewhere. So I don't remember which email it is, but uh, hopefully it's there. I'm sure okay. we can have those anytime anyways. We could grab it. I just didn't know how to put it in. Oh yeah, you go to upload image right here. Okay. And then um, you can upload anything you want. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then Michelle has just put um, yeah. the link for Canvas education program. Okay, so here there's an education program that you can apply for. I totally forgot about this because we're on the pro version, but you can apply for it. It's going to give you like edu like a lot of unlocked features. You just have to good um, you have to give a good reason why, 
it's almost applying for a scholarship, but read the eligible requirements. You could get it for free, which is really nice. Um, it unlocks pretty much everything. And just think of all the things your students could do for you as far as like that marketing hat or gathering information. I haven't showed you infographics yet, but if you go to infographics, this is where I generally point students towards because they can put a lot of information in a small amount of space. So let's just say we are talking about, um, okay, not that one, but you know, something. So creating a business plan or something like that, you can see like the nice flow of color and images and then just the amount of information on here. It, you know, is a good amount, but it teaches them to be short and concise with their information. And then uh, you obviously have to talk about citations at the bottom or something like that. But these templates give them an idea of how to organize information. And it gives them just a nice starting point. And eventually, students might even start from scratch. But they've got a lot to go back on as far as just these infographics. So um, I would say to a student, hey, you're going to do a, an infographic today. You can use a template and just make sure you make it your own. Choose your own colors, your images. Today's um, infographic is going to be on, you know, Frankenstein and 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 comparing it to modern modern movies and influences or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can see that just just with so many designs, they can click on, and most of these I've clicked on are free. So even if you don't get that, um, you know, premium pro education uh, link and you aren't successful with that, the one that Michelle shared, there's just a ton of free things on Canva that you can take advantage of and your students would be fine with the free version. I honestly used the free version for the longest time, even in this job, until I decided that um, we just needed a little bit more. So I, I use it a lot more than than say a normal person, but uh, you're, for your students, the free version should mostly be fine. Um, any questions so far about Canva? Okay, so that's kind of Canva in a nutshell. It's, it's a short kind of um, webinar today, but like as you go through, you can, it, it's just so easy to, walk you through something uh, if you wanted and you run social media for your school you can click on say this twitter post and it's going to make a post and it's going to size it to the correct size on twitter so it looks nice on the phone and a computer and and whatnot so you can just start with uh, templates for twitter if you want and say do you want for your school your you know plugging a school sports event or something like that. You can easily put your team's picture or whatever right in there and then just edit the words. And then this is ready to go on Twitter. If you're doing Facebook or something like that, you can click on a Facebook post and it sizes it for you. So it'll look nice on the Facebook app and the phone and all that. And same thing with Instagram, Facebook covers. This is gonna allow you to make a nice right size cover for Facebook and uh, whatnot. So it's very nice if you if you do have, even if you do don't and you're not in charge of the social media for your school, you can also use this for a side hustle if you have a Facebook for a side business or something like that. And this is Canva is a very versatile tool. Okay. Do on the yes. um, you mentioned the pre the premium one. Mm -hmm. If you do have that. Um, as a teacher, do all your students have access to the premium or do they have to use the free side? So they, the way you log into Canva is you have to have your own account. So I created it with Google. Um, I've got Kira's team right here. It's one of my students in sixth grade and they've shared some of their designs with me, but they have to have their own account. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's where the, so the apply for Canva's education program, that one would give you free accounts um, as far as the pro version for teachers and students. So oh, great. this one. Okay, thank you. So check that out. Thanks for finding that, Michelle. And uh, yeah. Okay, that's a good question. But yeah, Canva it is just so easy to use that this the presentation isn't that long. But if you click on school, even that's going to give you like a nice little. Um, subset for what you could do. We've got anything from yearbook to mind map, 
we click on see all we've got like t-shirt designs flyers we keep going there's just a lot you could do there's a yearbook the class schedule the worksheet if you want to do like a digital lesson plan for you to and there are a lot of templates so if I, let's for example let's click on the worksheet one And we have a couple different worksheets here that you can just design yourself that even if you aren't specifically wanting students to design anything and you think, oh, maybe I'll make my own worksheet. It might be, it might look really good if I click on this ELA worksheet and just edit it and whatnot. This is, this is for a younger audience, of course, but you could totally edit the images and words and then, you know, on Seesaw or something, paste it out and then students could answer um, that way on Seesaw. But this is such a versatile tool. You have just a wide range of things you can do with Canva that I can't recommend it enough just because beyond the design aspect, you have so many options. Again, just for school, they, they've been the last couple of years targeting education. So there are just a ton of things that you can uh, filter through. All these worksheets are free. These worksheet templates and designs are free for you to kind of customize the information. So if you, you're thinking, oh man, distance learning in the fall, I don't have any start or any materials that look nice. Uh, this is a plug and play where you can just put in your information and then, um, you know, if you're allowed to print it out, you can send it to students. If you're just putting it online and then having them submit online somehow by taking a picture of it or whatever, you can do that, but this gives you a lot. Any questions about Canva? Because I've, I've saved the last little bit for uh, questions. Okay, it looks like Angie for the infographics. Are those templates? How do you get that? Okay, yes, those infographics are templates. So if I go back to home here, and then I go to, there's multiple ways you can get there. You can get there from the bottom here, clicking on infographic. You can search it and then click on it and then all these are templates that i could use all these are just you know ones that they've made and that you can use and edit so let's say i wanted cooking up comics here and that's just gonna sh just give me an example of what an infographic and how can it can be organized and the design and whatnot i can click on anything on this infographic and kind of edit it the way i want and move it around um, and then, of course, if I don't like that, I can just go to the template section on the design tool and then click on it and change it that way. Great way to keep students engaged. Yes. So, so I, again, this is a wonderful way to keep students engaged because they like to create things. Students like to be doing things, and this gives them like the feel of a like an expert almost where wow, I didn't know I could make something look that nice. And honestly, the templates help a ton. Okay, if, uh, make sure it, I'll, I'll stick around for another few minutes. Um, so make sure you ask questions um, and whatnot if you have them. If you're just joining us and if you kind of came in a little later, the evaluation link is here. If you want your sketches, make sure you fill that out. And of course, if you definitely walked in a little bit late, I'm gonna send the recording out. This one's a shorter webinar um, and I've saved the last little bit for questions. So feel free to ask anything you'd like. Yeah, if you don't have any more questions, uh, again, I'll stick around for 10, 15 minutes and whatnot, uh, but have a nice day and feel free to email me about all things Canva or EdTech as things come up. Do, do you know if this goes on Dojo? This, so Class Dojo, there's no direct link or anything for Class Dojo, but you could send it as a link. So if you wanted to um, go here and then share the link and they can click on it and view it, you could do that. As, as far as uploading images, Dojo does allow you to upload images. From what I remember, I, I did use it in sixth grade. So you can download anything like a PNG or JPEG and then just upload it to Dojo that way. Okay, thank so, you. 
Yeah. So are you, you must be thinking of something like a class announcement, like a or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. No problem. All right, make sure you fill out that evaluation. That'd be super helpful for us. And if you want sketches, that'd be helpful for you. And uh, I will email you with a recording if you want to refer to it, but uh, we're kind of done for today.